on my last video where I said I'd coach anyone who submitted a video within 24 hours in the YouTube comment section, we had 83 people submit a video. So got a bit of work to do here. Not all 83 of them made the 24 hour time period, but we've certainly got quite a few to slam through. In other news, Connolly is releasing a brand new water ski tomorrow, depending on when you're watching this video, but that's awfully exciting for both myself and the whole Connolly team. But the purpose of this video is coaching. So let's get into the first one. First up is Fred from Sweden. Not sure if Fred is a Swedish name, but we'll let that slide. So Fred sent me quite a lot of footage. I've got sort of four minutes of skiing here. And Fred, when you watch your footage back, what I want you to notice is that your good turns are the turns where you go through, you do your edge change, and you actually get a little bit of lean to the inside prior to letting go of the handle. We don't need much, but that's definitely the difference between your good turns and your bad turns. And if you can, a pylon on the boat instead of the transom mount with the pulley running across the back of the rope is going to be a much more solid pull for you to run along because as you can sort of see here, when that pulley slips along the rope, it does trip you forward a little bit and I feel like you'll feel much more confident to really get some load happening if you were on a pylon. But I think in the comments you may have mentioned that you actually are probably going to attempt to get a pylon. So cool Fred, thanks for the vid and let's have a look who's next. Alrighty, next up we have Richard. Oh, poor Richard. Richard's link is broken. Sorry mate, missed out. Um, all right, we will move on to the next one. Next is Colton from the US of A. So Colton, what you'll see with your skiing here, hopefully you will see it once I point it out, is that your hinge point is your hips. Across these wakes, to absorb the wakes, you're bending at the hips. And what I would prefer to see is you bend your knees to get across these wakes. Eventually, you're gonna transition into a skier that doesn't absorb the wakes at all. So you stay stiff, you sort of hold through the wakes and you end up pushing through them and your legs really don't move at all. Maybe your ski and your body will bounce a bit, but that's sort of a stage beyond where you're currently at. I feel like Colton, with where you're currently at, we do need you to absorb these wakes. I just need you to absorb them with your knees and with your legs, keeping your hips in the same place. So hopefully that makes sense, but I do need to see an increase in knee bend across the wake, and I need to see your hip location relative to your chest staying exactly the same. We want to sort of keep your feet underneath the rope and just have your legs bend up and down. So good luck with that, mate. Hope it helps. Okay, next up is Professor Ed. Professor Ed has a YouTube channel called The Accounting Professor. Appears to be aimed at first year college level accountants. As far as Ed's water skiing goes, it's pretty good, mate. I watched quite a lot of the footage that you sent me, you're letting go of the handle pretty early on some of your easy passes. So just carry the handle a bit longer on these easy passes and you won't get sort of strung out on one hand and feel those wobbles, but it's pretty good and it's not a huge concern because when we get you skiing faster, you sort of stop doing that. Now on this 15 off pass at 34 miles per hour, it's pretty good, mate, you just, loading in a sort of pattern that's more conducive to a much shorter line and you're making it a little more difficult than what it needs to be you're really using the first wake to do your edge change you're on the inside edge as a result of hitting the first wake beginning your edge change and you're really landing on that inside edge whereas your rope on 15 off is long enough that you can actually cut through both wakes through the second wake and just continue to head out out towards the bank that is. What's happening here is by the time you get to the second wake, even though you've loaded really well and you've really got a lot of trajectory going across the lake, you sort of hit that first wake and all of a sudden point straight at the buoy, relatively speaking, and that just makes you a little narrow and it sort of sets you up for a huge turn, which you're quite good at doing. Like you're getting turns done here, which I would argue uh, of the level of someone that would generally be running maybe a 14, which is um, 28 off, or at the very least a 16 metre pass, which is a 22 off. But I see, I see that we're sort of just seeing 15 offs from you. So I feel like it's a result of you getting to the, sec to the first wake, sorry, 
standing up and pointing straight at the buoy. Get to that first wake and dig in. Stay down, keep the load, don't let the boat pull you up. Load for longer, load harder. I want peak load at the center line and I want you to carry that off the second wake and then let your ski roll through the edge change and you should be much wider, okay? And that will let you do a big, longer, slower turn. It will make completing the turns much easier and I think if we get you running that type of a swing arc, it'll be far more conducive to seeing you shorten the rope and not have anything go wrong. So good luck with that, Professor Ed. Hope it helps. Next is Hendrik, also from Sweden. So, Hendrik, mate, your skiing is very nice. You're clearly capable of quite a lot of buoys. Um, I'm noticing that you don't have much energy into the first wake on most of these relative to how good a skier you are. And I'm seeing you sort of have to um, tense your glutes and kind of shove the ski forward a little bit due to the fact that you're a little down on energy and speed and load. And you're sort of creating a band-aid solution here where you sort of tense your glutes and just explode your feet out in front of you um, as you hit that center line. Whereas what I would prefer to see and what's gonna be far more conducive to seeing you run the shorter lines, which judging by this video, you're very capable of, we're gonna need more load, more speed into that center line. And then hopefully there'll be no need for you to sort of throw your feet out. You'll already have all that energy and your job will then just become to maintain that through the handle as you roll into your edge chain. So I just need a bit more load, a bit more speed into the center line. I really wanna see peak load, peak speed at that center line and I don't wanna see you have to throw your feet out, but it's pretty good skiing, mate. It's nice to watch. Alrighty, last one for today. This is Eric from Utah. So Eric, mate, good skiing, especially considering that there's no buoys here, quite impressive. I think you're playing with weight distribution a little bit too much. I know elite level skiers step to the front on their offside to give a quick rotation and they sort of push on the back to slide the tail on their onside. But I feel like with where you're at right now, the fact that you're playing with that weight distribution, not only across the wakes, but through both turns, meaning on and offside, I just think it's causing the ski to porpoise and react a little bit too much. I think for your skiing, we'll be far better off if we can just get you to have even weight on both feet, both across the wakes and through both turns on and off side. It will mean that your turns need to be a bit more of a rotation, a bit less of a push or a step, but that's okay. And I just think if we can stop the ski porpoising, I've seen in this video quite a few instances where you can actually load quite hard and that's what I want. I really do want you to load hard and keep loading hard, but what's happening in the video is when you do load hard, things go wrong. If we keep even weight on both feet, I think you'll find everything starts to settle down and you'll be able to then step up the amount of load you're carrying across the wakes and hold it through the wakes. So good luck with that, Eric. Hope it helps, mate. Eric was meant to be the last one, but I have found a Connolly skier here in the comments. So as always, I'm going to be nice and biased and let Dennis skip the queue. So Dennis, mate, I think if we get you cutting out, Dennis is on 13 meters here, so it's quite a difficult pass. If we get you cutting out with softer knees, just a bit more bend in those knees as you go to cut out for the gates, when you get up into your glide, things will settle down a lot quicker. You're sort of rocking around both forward, back, and to the side. And I think if we get you cutting out with the softer knees, it'll take care of most of that and you'll be ready to turn in the moment you stand into your glide. So that's just gonna help us settle you down. You've turned in pretty well. Um, your approach to one, you've actually got a bit of space into one, but by the time you turn one, it's not looking like you're gonna get six. Um, you sort of get stood up a bit at the back of one. I know that's never intentional, but I do just want a bit more pre-turn and I know that's tricky on a 13 meter pass, but it is required to run it. You're sort of reaching in, in a frozen position and waiting till you clear the buoy and then beginning your rotation. On these short lines, you have to get the front in and begin a bit of slide and a bit of rotation prior to getting to the ball. You can't just freeze, travel past it, and then drop 
your rotation. You've got to start rotating before you get there. And the good thing about that on the short lines is you're going fast enough where the initial part of that rotation doesn't bring you to the inside. It still lets you gain a bit of width because you're actually increasing the amount of surface area in the water as you dip the front in and begin that rotation. So I just need a bit more pre-turn from you, Dennis. And I think we're gonna maybe risk going inside the buoy a little bit. Maybe you'll have to adjust what you're doing across the wakes in order to achieve it. But if you really do just focus on getting a bit of rotation prior to getting to the ball and really just finishing that snap at the exit of the ball instead of having to travel past it and then beginning it, I really think that'll be the key to getting you through these 13s. You look pretty capable of it, especially considering what we saw um, through the initial start of that gate. So good luck, mate. Hope it helps. And send me another video if you like. Alrighty, that's it for today. Hope everybody liked it. If you're enjoying these, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification. And maybe hit like on this video as well. I'm told that will help the YouTube algorithm show this to every single water skier that types in water ski on YouTube. Thanks crew and catch us later. Stay tuned for tomorrow, I think, maybe later this week when we release all with regards to Connolly's brand new water ski. We've put a lot into this, so hope everybody is interested enough to go and try it. Thanks everyone, see ya.